Christmas vacation. Forget the hustle and bustle of the holiday season and just decompress. Why is the carpet all wet, Todd? I don't know, Margo. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation was released in December of 1989 and is the third film in the Vacation series, following National Lampoon's Vacation and European Vacation. It's a rare example of a third film in a series possibly being the best of the bunch, certainly the most watched. You could argue that the original Vacation is a better film, but I don't know anyone who watches that movie every single year. Meanwhile, Christmas Vacation is a must must watch annually, at least in my household. My poster for this film is an original, folded, double-sided one-sheet from 1989, measuring 27 inches by 40 and 1 quarter inches. This is a very early example of double-sided posters. They were only just starting to be printed in the late 1980s, and at this point they were still shipping posters folded which is what happened with this poster. I purchased it back in 2013 from eMoviePoster.com for 33 US dollars. Currently at auction, this poster can reach as high as 300 US for a pristine example. <laughs> as you can see, this poster has seen some action over the years. There's some paper loss where little bits of tape have been attached to the poster, and there's some strong creasing along the fold lines. Personally, I kind of like that about this image. I like when something shows its age, its wear and tear, as long as it doesn't detract from the central artwork. And in this case, I don't think it does. If anything, it adds a little something special to this poster kind of like a patina. Posters that are a bit beat up tend to be cheaper, so this is a win-win for me. Hopefully no other collectors will share my passion for patina, and these posters will remain affordable to the average person. Hopefully no other collectors will share my passion for patina. Christmas Vacation was the directorial debut of Jeremiah S. Chechik, a fellow Canadian. Before this, he'd only directed music videos for bands like Hall & Oates and Van Halen. He has a very brief on-screen cameo on the cover of a magazine that Clark is trying to read with his hands covered in Christmas tree sap. Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo reprise their roles as Clark and Ellen Griswold. And once again, we get a fresh new set of actors to play Audrey and Rusty, this time by Juliette Lewis and Johnny Galecki. In Christmas Vacation, they play siblings, and 29 years later, they actually play a couple in the TV show, The Connors. Oh, so, so sorry we're late. <laughs> Who's this? This is my girlfriend, Blue. This is my girlfriend, Blue. I have nightmares about what he does in his bed alone when I'm not lying right next to him. Get off me, you little fungus. Hey, kids, how are you liking those sweaters, Audrey? Love the stripes. Russ? Awesome, Dad. Audrey? Super cute. You're all rusty? Rad, Dad. And you two, who are you? New Audrey. And Rusty. Old Navy, come fun, come on. The film was shot on the Warner Brothers back lot, and the Griswold's neighbor's house is actually the same house that the Murtaugh family lived in all four Lethal Weapon movies. Oh, I, I think your daughter kind of likes me. If you touch it, I'll kill you. <laughs> You'll try. There is some continuity with the previous Vacation films, Cousin Eddie being the best example, played by former Oscar nominee and current Q crazy, Randy Quaid. Bingo. He even wears the same shoes that he gave Clark as a gift in the first Vacation film. Brian Doyle Murray, the brother of Bill Murray, also appears in both films, though he plays two completely different characters. Over there with the others, Greaseball. The pickup truck that cuts off the Griswolds during the beginning of the movie is the same truck that Kurt Russell drives in Overboard, and it also appears in They Live. Chevy Chase has developed a fairly bad reputation in recent years for being difficult to work with. The original director of this film, Chris Columbus, backed out after meeting with Chevy Chase only once and decided to direct a different movie, Home Alone. Both that movie and Christmas Vacation were written by John Hughes, famous for directing a variety of wildly successful rom-coms and high school movies in the 1980s starring the Brat Pack. 
Hughes wrote both the original Vacation film and Christmas Vacation based on articles that he had written for the National Lampoon magazine. Christmas Vacation is based directly on Christmas 59, which appeared in the December 1980 issue of the National Lampoon. To me, this is a true holiday classic because it's a masterclass in low stakes humor. Anything that can go wrong does go wrong, and it's all gonna be okay. Oh no, windows are smashed. Everything is destroyed by their oversized Christmas tree. It's fine, it's all been fixed off screen. Clark falls off a roof, through a ceiling, down a hatchway, no visible injuries, goes back to work the next day, getting it done. There are fireballs, SWAT teams, killer rodents, gropings. It's all fine, no worries. The spirit of Christmas prevails. They tried to relaunch the Vacation series in 2015, and the central plot was about a marriage that was falling apart. Those are high stakes, and it really reduces the fun factor when you're watching a family that essentially needs to have a good enough time for them to stay together. That's dark. I've never even heard of the original vacation. Doesn't matter. The new vacation will stand on its own. Eat my road, red liver lips. La 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 la. I think that's why this is an annual watch for so many. We've all had terrible holiday experiences, weird family members you only see once a year, and the odd front lawn explosion, but it's all part of Christmas vacation, and it's all gonna be okay in the end. This was a massive hit upon release, grossing over $74 million on a $28 million budget, making it the most financially successful vacation film in the series. This was so successful that 14 years later, they created what is widely considered to be one of the most awful sequels of all time, Christmas Vacation 2, Cousin Eddie's Island Adventure. Nick, will you please take your hand off my breast? From now on, <laughs> I've got no place to go but up. I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Christmas vacation to to market the film, Warner Brothers turned to artist Chris Consani to create this beautiful one sheet. And if you look closely, you can see Consani's signature in the chimney bricks. This is the one and only poster that they used for the release of this film. Did they use this artwork for the physical media? Let's see what Santa's brought in his bag. Ho, 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 Blu-rays. Ho, 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 ho. So first up, of course, we've got Christmas Vacation on VHS. Definitely own this as a kid. This was a well-watched tape. We've got the electro-shocked Chevy Chase on the spine. Digitally processed, ooh. I love this artwork. It fits the tape really, really well. Can't quite make out the Kansani signature here, but we know it's there. We know it's there. Next up, we've got the DVD release of Christmas Vacation. I always really liked these Warner Brothers paper cases, the way they snap together, and it just felt nice. There's a photo on the back of this of the Griswolds appearing to be speaking with someone at the Christmas tree farm, and that scene does not appear in the movie at all. So according to what I read online, they're haggling about the price, and they ask for a saw, and the guy hands them a shovel. Next up, we've got the Blu-ray, which someone at Warner Brothers definitely saved their file because this is exactly the same as the DVD. The same special features, same photographs. Clearly someone had saved this design and they were able to reuse it probably 10 years later. Okay, and finally, we've got Christmas Vacation in 4K. This is the most recent physical release of this movie, and... <sighs> you know what? Get it on there, cover it all up. It's the same on both spines, so why not make one of them English and one of them French? Maybe just someone just doesn't care? I don't know. 
I think they were going with some sort of holiday Christmas card thing here, and it's not terrible, but it feels very Photoshop-y. Like they obviously had this one photo of the family and they added all of these other elements, this fireplace, the cat. It's all just very composited and not necessarily in a really nice, pleasing way. It's very busy. And that is it. There were no soundtracks released for Christmas Vacation or novelizations or coffee table books or anything like that, which I honestly think is money left on the table. I would definitely buy a soundtrack to this movie. Okay, who remembers this sound? Oh, <laughs> wow. Shitter was full! Ah. Yeah, you checked our shitters, honey? Clark, please. He doesn't know any better. Let's get so what do I think of this poster? What's the art score? A is for aesthetics. How good is the design? How pleasing is the typography, the overall visuals, and the vibe of the poster? Basically, is it nice to look at? The design of this poster is fairly reminiscent of the animated sequence that opens the movie, and I really like that. All of the nighttime scenes that take place in the movie have this very strong blue moonlight overhead lighting scheme, the kind of thing that you can only really achieve in a studio backlot, and I love that this design embraces that look and feel. The painting is high highly detailed with his outfit and all of these little electric shocks and the Christmas lights. And now, it's tagline time. <laughs> you woo, crack up. Ugh, that's a pretty bad pun. Though I guess it's sort of fitting. It is the kind of thing that Clark Griswold would say. For aesthetics, I give this poster a two out of three. R is for representation. Does it represent the film very well? Does it match the look and feel and the ideas it's presenting? Is there a sense of story? There's certainly a huge sense of story here, but ironically, it's depicting something that never actually takes place in the film. Clark never gets electrocuted. A cat does, RIP. And there's some sparks that fly when he plugs in the Christmas lights, but Clark Griswold never gets shock treatments in his Santa suit. Still, this poster poster does really well at capturing the vibe of the movie. Extreme things will happen, and according to that cringy tagline, you should have a blast watching it. For representation, I'm giving it a 2 out of 3. T is for titillation. Does this poster inspire any excitement or intrigue? Does it make us want to go watch the movie? It's kind of hard to judge this given that I saw this movie many, many times before I ever saw this poster. This is one of those films that's shown annually on TV and that's the first place that I saw it. It's a crazy image and I would have to imagine that if I saw this for the first time, I would probably stop and check out what's happening to that poor beardless Santa. For titillation, I'll give it a two out of three. So with a current art score of six out of 10, this poster is hilarious. But what about that final point? What did my wife think? Ho ho ho, well there you have it. With a final art score of seven out of 10, this is a tried and true Christmas classic. This design was successful enough that they emulated it eight years later with the poster for Vegas Vacation. Good art makes you feel, and this poster makes me feel festive. I put it up every single year. It's sort of the signal that Christmas is about to begin in our household. It's also kind of impossible not to look at this image and laugh and think of some of the classic quotes from this movie. Dinner is full! <laughs> Where's the Tylenol? See, you can't see the line. Oh, where do you think you're gonna put a tree that big? Bend over and I'll show you. Well, that about wraps it up for this very special holiday edition of Paper and Light. I hope you and your family are able to spend some quality time this season free of police incidents and sewer explosions. I believe any good collection needs to be shared. And in that spirit and the spirit of Christmas, I have got a grab bag of goodies that I'll be giving away. I'm doing the VHS, the DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, with my own personal artwork added to the spine, and I found a talking Christmas decoration. That's right, you can see this film in a variety of formats and hear some of those classic Christmas vacation quotes. Keep my road, red liver lips. 
If you want a chance to win this Christmas vacation grab bag, all you need to do is head to my Patreon, the link to which will be in the description box below. We do major giveaways with every episode of Paper and Light, your name is entered into a draw, and we ship worldwide. I really, really appreciate the support, and it goes towards finding even more interesting movie posters to show you in the future. Thanks everyone, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, I'll see you in the next episode, I can't wait to show you more. Oh, ho, 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 boy. <laughs> How do we end this one, eh? Let's see what Santa's brought down the chimney. Oh, ho, 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 you've been very good to see me, young man. I hope so. I hope you can see what a silly waste of resources this was.